Okay, gonna do a quick update video here. I'm getting ready to blow this apart again, and by that I mean the body's coming back off. I've got some things back in the back end now that I need to take care of and mounting this new seat, which it's gonna have to do with framework where it's gonna be much easier to just get this body out of the way. And it occurred to me that the last video I did uh, I was I'm quite a bit further along now So before I go ahead and start dismantling this thing again for the hundredth time I figured I'd catch some people up So the last video I did I had talked about getting this grill and uh, grill shell and insert made Which came out nice. I like it And I took I looked at the Model A grill and exaggerated it. I mean, exaggerated the things I like, like this this line right here. And then I did the insert to bit, to match it, to, to follow it. And originally also when I made the grill, I had done a lower piece as well. I actually still have the piece over there uh, that I cut off. And it was going to be a two-piece grill so that I have all these lines, these oil lines in here. And also the rectifier right there. There's no way with these clearances... There's no way to get the grill in there. It's one piece. You can see right there. So I made the grill shell as one piece. And then I was going to have it to where that this bottom piece bolted on there. And of course I was going to do insert an insert piece in there too. But then after thinking about it... Um, I didn't really want something hanging down that low in the front unprotected for something that's going to go off road because it's probably just going to get bashed in. And along with it getting uh, bashed in, there's a good chance that it might uh, bend. Well, obviously would bend, but bend or twist. And as it did, you know, just like, you know, all body damage, it could actually come up and twist another part of the main shell. And this was so much work. I really didn't want to take the chance just for having that little piece on there. And also, I'm planning on putting an off-road LED light bar here, which is going to cover that area up anyway. So I decided to just run it without and just run the upper shell and insert, which I think looks great. And I looked at a whole bunch of... Uh, Model A hot rods and there's quite a few of them that just run this upper shell anyway And then along with that I had to do the the supports for it This one right here. This is all 3 8 um, round bar I actually uh, I left this straight and then I just bent a loop with the torch and welded it on And after I welded it on then I just cut that part out so it fit over that because this cleared by like a 16th but the problem is is with this thing running and all the vibration and that rod vibrating like this it would vibrate on that tube which over enough time obviously it's gonna wear a hole in the tube so i went ahead and clearanced that and got both of those mounted and uh i mean it's rock solid now and there's two 3 8 bolts at the bottom, one right there, one right there. So that's the deal with the grill. A lot of people were asking what I was doing for a seat. So this is an aluminum bomber seat. I got it from Jags. I thought about making one, but for what they wanted for this one, and it was already perfect dimensions, for this body I just went ahead and got this and it's it's already got the cutouts for a lap belt and I am gonna do a four-point harness so you've got your cutouts for that right there and then I'll run two over the shoulders however 
this isn't exactly where it's gonna sit it's still gonna you can see it's still actually gonna drop all the way down to this level and right now I've got on this temporary body brace you can see right there the seats actually sitting on that so it's gonna drop all the way down right now it's about four inches five inches higher than what it's gonna actually sit at but that is the seat and it's 18 inches wide at the hips which is actually kind of big for me but later on I end up getting rid of this or whatever uh, somebody you know larger than myself could fit in there I'm still undecided at this time though if I'm going to get the seat cover that they have available for this they actually have riveted buttons right there for the cover to go on and also there's one on the outside here and there and why they let those rivets stick stick out like that is beyond me I mean these seats are made to run bare too so my thinking is well what if somebody wanted to run it bare and then you've got those those sticking out which I could always knock them off, but then you get rid of the button too. So that's what's up with the seat. And let me see here. I got a lot of parts in. This is one reason why I got to get the body off so I can get to the back end. So the braking system wasn't too difficult. I had planned this all along. This is actually... Uh, a cart rear rotor and I think it's like nine and three quarter. It's pretty good size and These are the fronts and Then I just got the whole System from go power sports that's got the master cylinder and it's already uh, Bled out it's it's ready to go on So they had these on clearance sale too, so I got a good price on it and then, of course, the rear caliper and the two fronts. So the braking wasn't too big of a big deal, although I do have to make brackets on the front, uh, the front hubs to mount these. And then also, I'm going to have to obviously make a, a bracket for the caliper for the rear on this. I have, or I'm waiting on, the the hub the axle hub for this in shipping which of course is taking forever the more tricky part with this was this being a harley engine it uses 530 chain which is huge and i mean just to give you an idea of the size of that so it's 530 chain which i got this this niche or niche uh, industries drive chain and it's actually x-ring instead of o-ring it's supposed to be stronger although it's heavier and i think there's 112 links in this and i got two packs this one's just out of the box and this one there's still another one of these rolls in there so it's two at 112 so hopefully the 224 links will be enough now the issue of this with the cart is I got a, a one and a quarter inch axle for this when I first started planning the build. And I opted for one and a quarter right from the start versus the, the standard one inch that are, most people use. Because I knew it was going to be a bigger build and I knew I had huge 14 inch wheels. So... I wanted something beefier than just a standard one inch axle and I got the one and a quarter because originally for those that remember this was just going to get a 420 Predator and now it's got the Harley you know the 1200 Sportster engine in there so this engine puts out like I think it's like 68 foot pounds of torque you know, which to give you comparison, like a lot of guys that are like, well, you should have put like a 600 street bike engine in there. A 600 street bike engine or sport bike engine 
they put out more peak horsepower, but they put out like 45 foot pounds at 10,500 RPMs. And this is 68 foot pounds at only 3,500 RPMs, which is one reason why I did a V twin. So you can imagine 68 foot pounds in first gear on this, it's going to have a uh, massive torque. And I got the one and a quarter inch axle originally for a Predator. So my biggest concern right now is with this, I'm actually going to end up shearing keys with this axle, which we'll see how that goes. I'm almost positive, especially like on asphalt, if it hooks, it's going to want to shear either the sprocket key or it's going to want to start shearing hub wheel hub keys. And so for those that might not quite follow what I'm saying, here's your key, which would line up with the key slot on your axle with enough torque when this spins, instead of that key holding, which is what locks this to your axle, you basically shear that key completely off uh, from torque. So that leads me to this whole deal. I completely overlooked and also did not realize that nowadays there's a class of racing called micro sprints. So micro sprints use 600 uh, sport bike engines, which also use 530 chain. So I found uh, this sprocket, which is for a micro sprint. The only issue was the micro sprints run a massive uh, two inch axle, either one and three quarter or two inch axle or two inch axle bore. So I was able to get the sprocket, but I had no way of putting it on the one and a quarter inch axle. So I found this carrier hub on OMB warehouse and it's for one and a quarter axle bore. So that fits that. And then it had the same bolt pattern, which is six by on five and a quarter five and a quarter center line, which matched this. The only thing is, is these are five sixteenths and these are quarter 20. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill these out to five sixteenths and uh, re-tap and run a bolt through. So that takes care of that issue. The only thing, like I said, that I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure that if I get on it halfway hard at all, especially first gear, second gear, that that key is going to start shearing. So what's going to end up happening is it's going to be a lot of money. What else is new? But at some point, I'm going to have to swap out this whole rear axle for a micro sprint axle, which... The whole setup is like 11, 1200 bucks, but it has huge advantages. It's splined. Instead of using a, key, a quarter inch key, it's splined for the wheel hubs and it's splined for your brake and your most importantly, your sprocket uh, hub carrier. So, you know, and plus being a bigger two inch diameter and splined all the way around, you have far greater biting area that locks whatever it is onto the axle. So I'm going to go ahead, since it's already set up for this, I'm going to go ahead and build it out with this one and a quarter and with that setup that I was showing you. But I'm going to take it fairly easy with this uh, until I see what its limits are. And then at some point in the future, I'll probably just going to go, if I don't sell this, I'm going to go ahead and swap all of that out. And it was a really good thing to learn anyway, because if I sell this, I'm probably just going to build another one. And with that, I'm really thinking about if I do another V-twin going with like a 103 twin cam or a, a big inch Evo motor, like a 131 or something. Or if I do a street bike engine, then I'll probably just go with the Hayabusa. I mean, uh, 
anyone that knows me, I mean, this build is actually an example. I don't play around with stuff because it's like, if you're going to go through all this work, you might as well go all the way. So if I do a street bike engine, I'm just going to do a Hayabusa. And that being said, it's a good thing that I found out about those two inch micro sprint axles being splined and all that, all that jazz. You know, because that's been one of my biggest concerns as well. If I go with more horsepower and all that, what can I possibly use that's out there that uh, will hold this kind of power? So I also, oh, it's on this side. You can see this, this body line right here. Uh, since the last video, this side here, you can actually still see it. This used to come down and then dip in here and rise up right here. And because it was for the, when this was a sidecar, motorcycle sidecar, this would have been the right side of the bike. The bike would have been over there. And this, would, this cutout was for you to get your leg in and out. So I went ahead and got rid of that, that dip, which I said I was going to do. Uh, so now it's the same as the other side. Uh, just because it's more of a hot rod line. That was really nagging nagging me bad. So I got that out of the way. And let's see here. Also, I've got a lot going on with... I got these uh, pillow block bearings. One and a quarter inch. And those are actually going down on the frame rails here directly under the, the drive sprocket and I'm gonna have a jack shaft directly under that with a short chain here and then the jack shaft gets a second sprocket next to it and that gets the chain which is gonna go all the way to the back so that's that and then I just ordered Another short one and a quarter inch hollow axle, and this is actually going to be for my jack shaft. So that's what those uh, pillow block bearings are for. And as far as wiring, I decided to, uh, I went ahead and got this. This is like a 12 space fuse block. It comes with the fuses too, blade fuses. And I decided to just go ahead and do this because there's so many things I got to start wiring up. And one of them being this electric fuel pump I got for this. This is a, it's like a 2 to 3 PSI pump that I found to get uh, fuel from my fuel cell. And get fuel from there up to the motor motor engine i know some people are real picky about that so i got the fuse block because there's going to be more and more things between led lights i plan on putting a utv off-road stereo in this and just a little stuff like that fuel pump that i wanted i wanted to go ahead and just do a fuse block now uh, it would clean up the wiring and be safe instead of doing 10 million inline fuses. So do the fuse the fuse block. And that one's really cool because it's got a light on it next to each fuse. So if a fuse is blown, it tells you right away which one it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get that taken care of to make sure the wiring's right. And then as you probably saw, this is the new steering wheel for it. It's a vintage drag glitter steering wheel. And it's small circumference too. It's only like nine something inches. So for this, this cockpit, it fits really good. It's a really good diameter. Plus, it, it's just cool. I wanted something with that uh, retro vintage drag uh, 60s and 70s era type feel to it. So I think that, oh, and then I forgot, uh, this is actually a steering rack for, a, well, they say it's for a, a sand rail slash dune buggy. It's a 14-inch 
So 14 inch being center eye to center eye on the himes. And I'm not quite sure yet if I'm going to mount this floating on the axle, straight axle, or if I'm going to mount it to the frame. So there's that too. And I'll probably wait uh, till a later video to get into the steering on this because I've actually got parts on the way for it to finish that out. And it's completely a completely different setup than what I had originally planned. So, all right, guys, I'm going to cut this off for now. I can see we're already at 20 minutes. I'll try to keep you updated as things move along.